I thank the member and call the member for Karangama. Uh, thank you very much, Madam Deputy Speaker. It's my great pleasure to rise on this motion to celebrate the wonderful policy announcements that have been made by the Turnbull government, including by the Prime Minister two weeks ago when we announced a city deal for the Geelong region, including our magnificent Great Ocean Road. And we've heard from the member for Shortland that Labor, another reason, Madam Deputy Speaker, not to vote Labor at the next election, the Labor Party does not agree with city deals. And even uh, Labor governments around the nation have warmly embraced this model, which brings together the federal government, along with state governments and local governments, to drive investment, confidence, in particularly in infrastructure spending. And it was certainly a great day when we announced our city deal, and there is great excitement from all of the stakeholders, from the local councils, from the Committee for Geelong, the Geelong Chamber of Commerce, the Chambers of Commerce from Apollo Bay, from Colac, and the many, many other stakeholders, including, of course, G21. And our city deal will build on the very significant investment that we have already made in very large, major infrastructure projects across our region, half a billion dollars or so in major rail upgrades, in the duplication of the Princess Highway and in the upgrade of the Great Ocean Road, a project that the previous Labor government uh, did not support. And if I take on board the member for Shortland's rhetoric in relation to infrastructure spending, look at the announcement of our government last year, Madam Deputy Speaker, on the regional rail upgrade. The Commonwealth, the Turnbull government, announced $1.42 billion, $1 billion in regional upgrades, including $225 million, a quarter of a billion dollars, in the Karangamite electorate. And guess what the state Labor's contribution was to that? A paltry $150 million. And over the weekend, Madam Deputy Speaker, I called on the Daniel Andrews government to match our contribution. We have to drive major infrastructure development and investment into Victoria. And one of the biggest reasons that it's not happening as it should is because the projects aren't there. We are waiting for two years for a business plan for a regional rail upgrade, the duplication of the rail between South Geelong and Warren Ponds, and we are seeing uh, Daniel Andrews putting Victorians on the slow train over that project. If you consider the, the uh, Victorian and federal Labor government's investment in the regional rail link, that has become an absolute disaster. Four billion dollars in the regional rail link, and it is standing room only. Geelong commuters, Madam Deputy Speaker, have been put last on that project, and of course we all know about the abhorrent decision to cancel the East-West Link, a, a, a project previously supported by the likes of the member of the, of the leader of the opposition, uh, and now, of course, Daniel Andrews has spent $1.2 billion to cancel that project, which is an absolute disgrace. So, Madam Deputy Speaker, we are very proud of our city deal for Geelong, which will also embrace the Great Ocean Road economy, which is such an important part of our region. Uh, and as I mentioned, it builds on the very significant investments that we've made in rail, but also in uh, state roads. Again, we had to drive and bring the state Labor government to the table on uh, state road investment. Uh, 10 million in total for the Hamilton Highway, 440 million for the Murray Basin Freight Rail Project, 600,000 for Midland Highway, 3.5 million for the Port of Geelong Access Improvement Package, 600,000 for uh, Grub Road, the planning for uh, the duplication of Grub Road in Ocean Grove, uh, and of course a total of $363 million to duplicate the Princess Highway between Winchelsea and Colac, along with the $100 million in total for the Great Ocean Road upgrade. So we are incredibly proud of our infrastructure investments in our region. Our city deal is a wonderful policy brought forward by this government. We've now heard that Labor is condemning this policy, very regrettable, uh, another indication of the Labor Party and the, mem and the Leader of the Opposition's wild swing to the left. Uh, and I you know, expect also that we'll see a repeat of, of some of the performance that we saw in 2008 when the Labor Party rejected a deal between Avalon Airport and AirAsia X to allow AirAsia X to fly into Avalon. And it was with great pride yesterday, Madam Deputy Speaker,
that Avalon Airport announced that it will become an international airport with great support from our government. A very proud day for all Karangamite residents and residents in the Geelong region. I thank the member.